So in this video, we're gonna talk about five tips on buying and installing golf shaft poles, AKA used golf shafts. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome to the Mobile Club Maker. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So today we are gonna talk about golf shaft poles or otherwise known as used golf shafts essentially. A lot of people probably don't realize that there is a big market out there of buying and selling used golf clubs, or excuse me, buying and selling used golf shafts. And these golf shafts are usually referred to as golf shaft poles. Now there is a pretty wide spectrum when it comes to, you know, what you're looking at, what you're getting from shafts that have basically never been hit before and were just installed in a club but were pulled out to be replaced by something else, basically brand new, probably have a brand new grip on them, maybe has the grip still in plastic, or you've got shafts that were played over some amount of time in a club that were then removed to be replaced with something else. Now there's a few different reasons obviously that people would be looking at buying these shaft pulls. The first one obviously, the most obvious one, is the price, right? So these are gonna be in most cases far less expensive than new shafts because they are in fact not new and they can't be sold as new so the price automatically is going to drop pretty significantly right there but like we said in many cases you're getting a shaft that is you know as close to new as it can be it's never been hit it's just been installed and removed so it can make a lot of sense if you're looking for a certain shaft or a set of shafts at a good price this is a good way to go so the other reason you might go looking at these poles, looking at these pre-owned golf shafts is, you know, with COVID still going on, there's a lot of backlog, there's a lot of back-ordered equipment out there, and shafts are no different. So if you're looking for a popular set of, you know, iron shafts or a popular wood or driver fairway wood shaft, in many cases they are on back order. So if you're trying to get your hands on one as quickly as possible, then trying to find one of these shaft poles may be the fastest, easiest way to get one. But having said all that, there are some definite do's and don'ts. There's some definite things you want to look out for, some definite things you want to be paying attention to when you are going and buying and installing these shaft poles. So we're going to talk about that today with our five tips for buying and installing shaft poles. Okay, number five, know the shaft lengths that you're buying. Now, when you go and you go online, go on eBay, or you go on some of these forum marketplaces and look for shafts, they will usually, in most cases, if they know what they're doing and they're good, they will show you the actual lengths of the shafts up against a yardstick, up against a ruler, some sort of measuring tape, something, so that you know exactly how long each of those shafts are. And I would say if you are buying shaft pulls, if you're buying these pre-owned, pre-used shafts, you always want to see these images of the shafts next to a tape measure or something similar showing you exact lengths. Do not go off of someone just saying, oh, these came out of a standard set of Mizuno irons. Because that is a pretty big assumption that one, they actually know that they came out of those clubs, and two, that they were actually standard to start with. Not to mention that each brand, their standard for length is going to be a little different. And when we're talking about different clubs and how far the tip of the shaft actually goes into the hosel, how far that sits off the ground, that again is going to be a different number depending on what brand, depending on what model head they came out of. So it doesn't do you all that much good to just know that, oh, this came out of a standard set of Mizuno irons unless you know one what that bottom bore to ground measurement is, that being how far the shaft sits above the ground, how much added length it gets when you install it in a head, and two, what is their standard? So if they give you an actual measurement up against a ruler, up against a tape measure, then you can say definitively, okay, I know the shaft is this long and I wanna put it in this head and I can figure out, is this going to work? Number four, is know your tip diameter. Now this is gonna be especially important when we're talking about iron shafts. Wood shafts, not really an issue anymore because most everything is 335 tip. But if you're buying a set of irons, again, do not just assume that because someone maybe says these came out of a set of 
Titleist irons that they are automatically taper tipped because yes, in most cases they probably are, but what if that person who previously owned them had a set of Titleist heads that they had bored out to install 370 shafts in? This happens, this happens all the time. So you're assuming that they're 355 tapered, but they have actually been uh, modified or altered to accept a 370 tip shaft, and that is actually what you're getting. So again, just like with length, you want to know that these shafts are in fact taper tip or parallel tip. And yes, of course, you could take taper tip shafts and fit them in parallel tip heads and vice versa, but it's a lot more work. And if you don't have to do that, there's no reason you should. So go ahead, make sure you know the tip diameter, either 355 taper tip or 370 parallel tip. Okay, tip number three, and this is more of an installation tip. When you are buying these shafts, they're gonna come sometimes in some condition like this, basically ready to be installed. They've been cleaned up already, there's no ferrule on there, there's no old epoxy residue, they're basically good to go. In some cases, you're gonna get a shaft though that looks like this. Maybe the ferrule's still on there, maybe it's got old epoxy stuck on there still, maybe the epoxy's down inside the shaft also, in which case you're gonna to have to clean, you're gonna to have to prep these to get them ready. What I would say is with a shaft like this, go ahead, don't bother trying to save this ferrule and reuse it because in most cases, it's gonna be warped from the heat that was used to pull the head and it's probably not gonna give you a great fit on the new head. So just go ahead, remove it, heat it up with a heat gun or a torch, peel it off with a utility knife, something like that, and start with a new fresh ferrule. They're inexpensive. It's not worth getting a nasty looking ratty ferrule and messing up the whole job just because you were trying to save the 50 cent ferrule. Next, you wanna make sure you remove all the old epoxy that's on the outside of the shaft, get it all cleaned up so your epoxy has, an, has a, excuse me, so the new epoxy has a good bonding surface to adhere to. And maybe even more important, make sure that you look down inside the tip of the shaft. Make sure you can put, you know, take a drill bit, stick it down in there and see that the old epoxy isn't stuck, you know, not only is it not at the very top, because sometimes you'll get shafts that at the very top, it looks like, oh, they're clean, there's no epoxy in there. But if you stick something down further into the shaft, all of a sudden you ram into a plug of epoxy. You wanna clear that out. You wanna make sure you get all that old epoxy out because that vent hole is what's going to allow you to put the club together and keep it from building up pressure and springing back out while it's drying, leaving you with a gap between your ferrule and your hosel. This is a big problem when you buy shaft pulls because you don't know who installed them you don't know how professional they were when they installed them. And in many cases, you're gonna find some shafts, and this has happened a lot to me, where someone will bring me a shaft pull, and it will have a plug of epoxy that goes a good six inches up the shaft. Now, they clearly used way, way, way too much epoxy when they were building that club the first time. But when you buy that shaft as a shaft pull, you don't know that, you can't see it, it's down in here but it becomes very difficult and you risk ruining the shaft in some cases if there's so much epoxy all the way down. So be aware of it, do your best to remove that old epoxy if you do have a graphite shaft and you do notice that, you know, if you stick the shaft up like this, can you see light through it or is it completely dark? If it's dark, that means, well, there's something stuck in there still, assuming the grip isn't on there and you're gonna to wanna to try and remove that as best you can so that you get a good bond when you put the new epoxy on and put the head together. Okay, tip number two, know what you're looking at, know what you're buying. And when I say that, really this is about matching up, does the description, does the title of what you're looking at match the pictures, and do the pictures match up with what you should be seeing, as in, do these, do these pictures look like the pictures on the manufacturer's website? of that shaft because as we've talked about in other videos, there can be very slight changes in the appearance of a shaft and it can actually be two completely different shafts, two completely different profiles, two completely different prices, but they can have very, very slight changes, very slight differences in their appearance. So you wanna make sure you know what you're looking at and know what to look for when you're buying one of these shafts because especially if you're dealing with 
you know, something like eBay, and there's plenty of good, honest sellers on eBay, but there's also some who just aren't. So you wanna make sure that if somebody's saying that you're buying a Mitsubishi Tensai Pro Orange, that what you're buying is actually the Pro Orange version and not just the Orange version. Because again, very different shaft, very different price. Okay, tip number one. I apologize for the music, by the way. It sounds like my neighbors are having a party. But tip number one, be wary of shafts that come with grips already on them. Now, why do I say that? You would think, well, hey, if they've already got grips and they're in good condition, then I'm just getting some free grips. And while that is true, the problem with the grips is, if the grip is on the shaft, you don't know what's under the grip. And by that, I mean, you don't know if there's an extension on that shaft. I have seen this happen more times than I can count. People will get shafts or they'll get a driver shaft and it'll have a grip on it. They won't want that grip. They'll take the grip off and surprise, there's an inch and a half extension. There's a two inch extension on that shaft. Now, I've got no problems with extensions. I use them all the time. But if I'm buying a shaft, I want to know if there's an extension on it because in some cases, that can make a big difference. Now, if it's a short extension, something I could pull out, you know, maybe I'd still buy the shaft, maybe I wouldn't, maybe I would you know, factor that into the pricing of it. But I would definitely wanna know, and especially if it's in a graphite shaft, where pulling out an extension from a graphite shaft can be tricky at best, and possibly damaging that shaft if you wanted to remove it. It's just something that if you can't see it, you won't know until you pull the grip off. So while it sounds good and all that, oh, this set of irons or this driver has you know, this grip already on it, just be aware that that grip means you cannot see what is underneath. Okay, so there's my top five tips for buying and installing shaft pulls. Again, if you're looking for a certain shaft that's hard to find, it can be a great resource. If you're looking for a better deal, a better price on a set of shafts, again, it can be a great resource. But just like everything in golf, you definitely want to do your homework. And because you're dealing with basically what is the secondary market here, because you're not buying these shafts from major retailers in general, because they are used or they've been pulled, you definitely wanna make sure that you know what you're getting and you aren't gonna get tricked into buying something that you didn't want. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go down below, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon. I am on Instagram. You can find me at Mobile Clubmaker. We will see you next time. Bye.